Hello everyone, welcome back to another session for our agriculture and rural development. For today's topic, we are going to start off with agronomy. Right, so in our last lecture, we have already covered the branches of agriculture and agronomy was also one of the major branches of agriculture, right? So today we are going to study some of the uh, meaning of ag agronomy. It's what are the type, what are the crops that con comes under this as well as we're going to talk about its scope and importance and some of the role of an agronomist. Okay, so whenever we uh, talk about the a word or whenever we cover up new subject the first and foremost that comes to your mind is the meaning of it right so before that we need to understand where the word has been derived from okay so this word agronomy it is actually derived from a greek word right so first one is agros which means field and the second one is nomos which means um, to manage so if you combine these two words together then we get the meaning of to manage a field or to manage the soil right so agronomy can be defined as the branch of agriculture which basically deals with the principles and practices of soil management and crop production so as you remember agronomy it deals completely with soil management practices as well as cultivation of crops right but when we're talking about cultivation of crops uh, make sure that this comes under the fodder crops all right we also have some food crops we have fiber crops sugar crops oil seed crops and uh, all of these will be under the agronomy all right but remember that when we these vegetables or the plantation crops they won't be coming under agronomy don't get confused because they these other crops will be coming under horticulture all right, so I'm glad it's clear. And now when we're coming to the uh, methods of agronomy, so the, for the methods of agronomy, they provide a favorable environment to the crop. So it's all about the production, how much uh, a person can increase the production with the minimum input, right? So the main aim of an agronomist is to get the higher productivity or the higher production of crops by uh, managing the soil properly. Uh, the third point out here is uh, the areas these agronomy it also deals with the areas of plant genetics plant physiology meteorology and soil science now coming to the plant genetics what is plant genetics so genetics as you know is a study of genes and hereditary right so when we're talking about plant genetics it's ba it basically means the study of the genes and hereditary and the gene variations in plants okay and coming to Plant physiology. Plant physiology, it deals with the study of the functions or the life processes of these plants. Um, just as humans also have, we have these different organs in our body with different functions, right? So in the same way, even the plants also have different parts of their, in their uh, whole structure or the whole body with different uh, functions. So this Plant physiology studies about all the different functions uh, which is present in the different parts of the plant. Okay, and now coming to meteorology. Meteorology is a scientific study which deals with the uh, study of the climate and weather patterns as well as all this weather forecasting. So how can you relate it to agriculture? So uh, when we combine these agriculture and meteorology, we get this term known as agri-meteorology or agro-meteorology. So the knowledge of this meteorology of the weather forecasting can help in growing the crops or in managing when to sow, right? What, uh, suppose, for example, uh, I plan to grow wheat today, right? And with the help of agrometeorology or with the help of meteorology, with the weather forecasting, uh, I'll be able to know when, the, when there's going to be rainfall or the, because we are, they are going to give us some of the knowledge on the weather forecasting, right? In that way, I'll be able to plan and manage my sowing or cultivating of my crops properly in a proper manner. And now coming to soil science. Soil science deals with the study of the soil uh, physiology, the soil biology, the soil physical characters, and the chemistry of all of these, of the soil, so that in that way, it will help an agronomist to you know, properly manage or to modify the soil right 
So in that way, these agronomy, it deals with a lot of other basic sciences. And other than that, the application of the uh, agronomy can be also utilized or it comes by the combination of a lot of other basic sciences like biology, we have chemistry, economics, ecology, earth science, as well as genetics. We already studied about what genetics is. And I don't think we'll have to explain what biology, chemistry, economics, and ecology is. So if you guys are uh, having a doubt on what ecology is, ecology is basically a study of the association of the um, living things or living organisms. As uh, Since in agriculture, we're going to talk about plants or some of the microorganisms along with the physical natural resources or the environment right so this is what ecology is all right so let's go to another slide and now coming to the scope and importance uh, as i always say that scope and importance is very important for the um, uh, for you all to understand the basic concepts and get a clear that idea about the importance of these uh, agronomy right so the first and foremost here is that uh, through the study of agronomy the future agriculture basically depends on the uh, dry land agriculture on the new technologies basically for dry land agriculture uh, as we all know that in india a lot of um, states or a lot of fields um, especially in agriculture they're more, mostly cultivated by the rain fed right so when we're talking about rain fed is basically we don't have other irrigation facilities all the the irrigation facilities is uh, not there and we provide the water to these crops through the rainfall itself so this is what a dryland agriculture is right through the study of agronomy we'll be able to figure out different methods and new scientific technologies that we can incorporate in these dryland agriculture and we can increase the crop production in india all right so that's first the second important is that uh, the package of practices can also be explored to full potential by developing of this new varieties right and they will also increase the crop production of that particular variety and this is all possible through agronomy science right for example uh, the area of the first thing that you guys need to understand here is package of practices. So what is package of practices? Package of practices is just the whole uh, package that you get along from the first sowing of the seeds, the whole process till the harvesting. So this whole process and the methods used in the uh, for use for this crop, particular crop, for example, I'm taking a rice. So right from when we sow the seeds till the uh, process till the end of Harvesting is known as the package of practices or the methods which we use for cultivating the rice, right? So this is the package of practices can also be explored through the study because through agronomy, we're going to study about the soil, about the water, about the plant physiology. So combining all these, it will be integrating all these sciences and we'll be able to come up with a new technology or a new methods which will give us higher productivity. All right. Okay, the third one here is to maintain the ecological uh, balance, right? So when we're talking about the ecological balance, uh, it will also, uh, we'll be trying to use all the natural resources which is available uh, in that particular farm, for example, soil, the, the fertilizers, the water, uh, the sunlight, all of these will be maintained in a proper holistic and harmony, harmonious way to get the more production minimum input but more production right coming to another slide we have the care and disposal of farm and animal products can also be dependent on agronomy uh, as the study of agronomy will also help us to how to uh, dispose the animal materials like milk or the feces of these animals or the the waste of this livestock can be utilized in a more proper manner so so that it will be more uh it'll, so that we'll have a proper farm management okay so these is the fourth point and now coming to the fifth point we have a proper method of uh, cultivation so when we're talking about proper method of uh, cultivation so this intensive cropping is basically the need for the day uh, to day life in our lives because for example um, in this we have a plot of land right and here we have we're integrating an int intensive culture or intensive cropping 
where the trees or the crops are grown a lot of trees or crops are grown in a small space right but they will get a proper higher production for example here in this another plot these same crop is grown in a wider spacing the number of the crops are lesser here so where what which one do you think guys think that will have a higher production of course in the first one which is an intensive so this will give a proper utilization of the land these are the same land but here the production will be lesser than this right so in this way the first intensive cropping method can also provide us with better um, crop production in a same part of land as the other. Coming to the sixth point, we have availability and application of chemical fertilizers. As we all know that due to the excess and improper method of application of these chemical fertilizers, there are a lot of environmental problems. It leads to soil degradation, water pollution, and even the yield of the production is also hampered through this efficient method of application of these chemical fertilizers. But with the role of the agronomy, right, we can identify and study the amount and the method, the right method to apply, how much to apply in a more precise way so that it doesn't hamper the uh, environment as well as it can help in better production of the uh, crops All right now coming to another slide we have the availability of an application of herbicides so this herbicides it's the same as the chemical fertilizers but the only difference here is that these herbicides are used for the weed okay to control weed and now if you're going to ask me what weeds are weeds are basically an unwanted plants which grow along with the main crop and these unwanted plants they are going to uh, definitely uh, compete with the main crop for sunlight for water for soil as well as for nutrients and so once they compete with them for such resources then the main crops growth and development will be hampered right so the right availability and the right application of these herbicides is very crucial and it can be done through the knowledge of through the knowledge of agronomy or through the study of agronomy coming to our eighth point we have water management practices so for water management practices we definitely can have a lot of uh, use a lot of new technologies and methods for the efficient use of water agriculture is the highest sector which uses a lot of water in the country and with the waste of this water management as we can see in India as well as all over the country so this practices can be done through the knowledge of agronomy okay and now coming to our ninth point we have a proper methods of cropping when we're talking about proper methods of cropping we can go for uh, broadcasting right so broadcasting uh, for example these are another methods of sowing um, we also have transplanting right so broad, broad, in broadcasting what we basically do is that we just simply take a bulk of seeds and we just throw it on the soil so that is simply what broadcasting is and the transplanting and transplanting method uh, we just use the small seeds it's mostly used for the small seed plants all right where we take the seed and we plant it in a nursery first and then once it attains a height of about 10 to 15 uh, centimeter we pluck out that uh, plant that nursery plant the small plant and then we transfer it to the main uh, field right so these are different methods and with the knowledge of agronomy a person will be able to understand which methods or methods of cropping to use so that he can get the highest crop production and it can be the plants can be more hardy to the uh, to the diseases as well as the pests and in that way the losses will be also lesser so these are some of the scope and importance of agronomy all right i hope that is clear and now let's go to the next slide we are going to talk about how agronomy is basically related to other different sciences right the first one here is a soil science so soil science basically it helps 
the agronomist to understand thoroughly the soil physical, the chemical, the biological properties, um, as well as the all these characteristics of the soil so that it can help the agronomist to modify the whole soil environment, in particular to the plant production or the crop production. Um, coming to agriculture chemistry, how in agriculture chemistry will help the agronomist is that he will help him to understand the chemical compositions and changes which is in, uh, involved in the whole of production, the whole of protection of these plants and also in the use of the crops and also livestock. Coming to crop physiology, we've already discussed what crop physiology is. So the crop physiology will help an agronomist to understand the basic life processes which goes about in the plant and the functioning of each plant will also help determine how much input requirement like nutrients is needed for the particular or part of the plant or, part or the whole of the crop. Okay, and now coming to ecology. Uh, the plant ecology uh, will help to understand the association of these plants or the crops with um, with its environmental factors or the uh, with the other physical environments like soil, the water, the sun, the air, the weather, right? And um, this can be, uh, for example, the influence of weather, such as the temperature, whether that particular crop needs this much of temperature or the rainfall that it needs to grow uh, in a more better and a more flourishing way. All right, so now coming to uh, biochemistry, how is biochemistry related to agriculture? So the biochemistry, it will show the way in which these biochemical processes are done or it takes place in the crop, which will help understand the critical requirements to favorably activate uh, these whole uh, processes in the growth and development of the plant. Okay, uh, this here and now the last one here is economics. Simply economics, it paves the way for the profits and loss analysis in the farm management or in farming. Okay, so these are other sciences or other relations of other studies which is related to agronomy. I hope this is clear. And now coming to our next slide, we have on a role of agronomist. So um, agronomist is a scientist or a person who deals with the study of problems of crop production, with the soil management, and he also recommends and adopt the practices for better crop production, soil management, and also to get a higher yield and income. So this is the rule, the basic definition of um, an agronomist. So agronomist is basically a person who studied agronomy, okay? And so his job is to recommend, to study more, and to do all the practices for better crop production, soil management, as well as to get the better, higher uh, crop productivity and better yeah, return. So this is something about what agronomist is. Now coming to the rules of agronomist. So the first thing here, the major or the most important role of an agronomist is to obtain the maximum production at a minimum cost. Okay, and this can be achieved by using his basic and applied um, basic knowledge in applied sciences, which will help in a higher crop production. Okay, guys, uh, the next important role of an agronomist is to uh, meet the needs of the growing human population. So, in broader sense, agronomist is majorly concerned with the production of food and fiber in to meet the needs of the growing human population. So this is the second major point. And the third, um, the third role of an agronomist is that he is also involved in selection of crops and different varieties. So this can also be done to suit the matched varied seasons as well as in the soil, all right? So another example I would give here is of the uh, soil, right? So with this knowledge, he'll be able to tell that groundnut grows well in red soil, right? And in the same way for for the black soil, we have cotton, right? So that's why the name also comes from a black cotton soil. And for sandy soils, 
what do we have? For sinusoidals, we have tuberous crops, okay? So when we're talking about tuberous crops, what are the crops that comes under? Potato, onion, sweet potato, collocasia, yams, okay? Uh, garlic, these will be your tuberous crops. So tuberous crops, they grow really well in the uh, sandy soil. So uh, that's about it. And now coming to the uh, efficient method of cultivation. So efficient method of cultivation, whether it can be broadcasting, we already discussed what broadcasting is, or the nursery and transplantation, or some of the practices like dibbling also. So it will also provide a better crop establishment and it will also uh, maintain the required population of these plants or the crops which are grown in that plant, that plant or in that farm, okay? Uh, another one here is identifying the nutrients and the roles. So agronomist, uh, he has to identify various types of uh, nutrients which are required, uh, including the time and method of application of these nutrients to the plants, uh, the duration of application of these plants, when to apply, how to apply, the methods of application is also the major role of an agronomist. Another role of an agronomist is a better weed management. So for agronomists, you must select a, ver a better weed management practices. It can be done either through mechanical or through physical, where uh, the weeds are taken out by hand, by human labor, or through chemical methods. So in chemical methods, we use either herbicides or uh, weedicides, or even cultural methods. So we can cultural methods can be achieved by uh, having a wide space uh, so it may increase the wheat growth by using some of these space crops. So we can have some of the uh, intercropping done in between where the spaces, uh, in the blank spaces where the wheat may possibly grow. So we can either do that or maybe we can even go for mulching, right? So once we cover the soil, there's no space for the wheat to grow. So this can be all the culture methods, right? So these are, uh, these can be also uh, done through a better integrated weed management systems and this can this is also a major role of an agronomist okay so coming to our last um, uh, last role of an agronomist is the proper management of water right so selection of the proper irrigation method uh, including the drip irrigation systems or sprinkler right or it can be just a normal tube well, different types of, or it can all, that person can also go for groundwater wells or either through rain bed. Or he can also follow some of the uh, methods like water harvesting systems. He can also go for watershed. Right, so all these can be done through. Uh, these are other methods which he can use the met different methods of irrigation to the crop to the plants, and also the irrigation scheduling is very important when to apply the water, for how much uh, to apply uh, the water, whether to irrigate it continuously or whether to stop in between, and how much water to be supplemented or supplied as computed by the agronomy science has to achieve the maximum water efficiency, right? Okay, so these are some of the roles of an, agronom uh, of an agronomist, right guys? So that's all for today. That's all for this lecture. We'll be meeting again with our next lecture on classification of Field crops, till then take care and we'll be meeting for the next session.